everyone, it's Desiree, and we are going to create a scene using die cuts featuring two Scrappy Tails die sets. Uh, one is called The Lemon Tree, and the other one is called Garden Animals. Now, I am a fan of the garden animals because I thought a corgi. I miss my corgi. We're going to start with our background panel. I'm using a piece of Bristol cardstock. And I'm using my go-to's. I seem to be making this a lot lately. Using mowed lawn and broken china this time instead of tumbled glass. And just blending those on the top and the bottom, depending, you know, deciding where that break is going to go. I'm not worried about a perfect blend. I don't need a perfect blend. Now this panel was cut really it was cut like four and one eighth by five and three eighths, and it's being placed on a piece of Desert Storm cut four and a quarter um, by five and a half. And it's actually just a little bit smaller than that, it's just to have that very faint white border on my standard A2 size cardstock. So let's start with the animals. I have cut two of the corgis in like a red brown and then an ivory and from those from the ivory i'm gonna have the the nose piece that i die cut and then from the corgi that i die cut in ivory i'm going to cut certain sections away from that piece so i want to have a white tuff for his chest and then i want to have some white on each of the paws and the tail. I forgot to do the ears. Um, just to have that difference. I cut the collar in gold mirror cardstock. And what's great is with these pieces, you can make them your own by simply digging into those scraps and getting your pieces ready. And you can create your pet and what he or she would look like. I used to have a corgi and I, I miss my corgi every day. His name was pain. His actual, his true name was pain and misery. <laughs> um, but yes, um, his name was pain and he was, he was definitely my pet. Um, wherever I was, he was. And he didn't let anybody else near me. So it was kind of funny because he did that with my husband. Okay. Sorry for the ramble there. I also die cut three butterflies. And I die cut them from purple cardstock. And then I'm coming in with a small blender brush just to add a little bit of purple in the center. Just to give them some shading. Now for the cat. I now have a cat because I don't have the heart to have another dog. Because there is no other dog like my pain. So we have a cat and he is a tuxedo cat. As always, this is my cat, wherever I am, he is. He's not the typical cat. Um, you know, usually cats are not, you know, they're, they want to be petted when they want to be petted. No, not this one. No, he needs to sleep with me. He needs to lay with me. He gets upset if I don't leave my office, my craft room to go sit on the couch so he can sit next to me. So he is a tuxedo. So again, I did the same thing. I cut two from the black to give it more stability. And then I cut one from the white and I'm just cutting pieces from that white to place on the black cardstock to make it look like a tuxedo cut. And again, that's the beauty of die cutting. Die cutting, you can really stretch your dies and create the scene the way you want it to look like. So now that I have all the animals done, now we're going to work on the lemon tree. So I cut the lemon tree two times from brown cardstock and one time from a green cardstock. I'm using brown as the base again to give it some stability. So I'm taking both of these and gluing those together. And then I'm going to take the other brown tree that I have and I'm going to cut away those leaves and some of these areas. Now this did take some time, not too much. I tried at first, I figured, oh, let's do this with a craft knife. It would be quicker. No, it was honestly quicker with my detailed scissors 
but I'm just cutting areas away, basically the leaves. I'm, I'm cutting all of those leaves, um, some of the lemon shapes, because I want these to be branches so that you'll see these branches going up the tree and then you'll see the leaves coming out from underneath and then when the when the lemons go on they'll be over those branches so it kind of pushes all of these layers together so it's only until you get truly you know right up onto the card that you'll see the difference in the card stocks but again it's another way to make your die cut look like another image look like that you paper pieced all of this together in one layer <coughs> excuse me allergies I love the spring the spring is coming but boy this the allergies this year is really bad so I do apologize for my voice um, hopefully it'll hang on for you so you can see I'm just cutting away and I'm looking and every once in a while I'm taking this <coughs> and laying it on top of my tree there to the left because I wanted to see okay what does this look like does this look like a branch that would be there or do I need to trim this branch down even more? Because I don't want it to go fully to the edge. I want that to be full of the green. So to make it look, you know, bushy, like a, like a bush, like a tree would. So, and you can see that's what it looks like. Um, so again, it just gives that level of dimension, that illusion of how we would see a tree. I'm going to adhere this right over the green using my liquid adhesive and we're just going to set that in place now I didn't want of course any of the green to come out from the trunk so I made sure that that was on straight I cut the pot from a deep maroon <coughs> again sorry um, and I'm pushing the tree through that so I want it to resemble that it's potted. I cut the pot twice. So I have one below and then I have the tree punched through that and then I have another one on top. I'm going to use the pieces, the top pieces. Now you could add that to the front to give it more dimension to make the pot look 3D. I'm actually using them to fill in around the side of the tree trunk so that when I put this down on my card base it will lay flat I didn't want to put any foam squares on there I just wanted to add those pieces of cardstock just a double layer so that again it would just it would still be propped up a little bit but then when I push it down it's going to get that curved just a little bit of a curved effect so I didn't need to add that top bar once I have the tree in place, I'm now looking at the animals and saying, okay, where do these go? Where do I want these placed? I know I want them to be propped up using some double-sided foam squares. Um, and where the cat's coming into in front of the pot, I'm going to add a little bit of liquid adhesive there as well. I'm going to prop up the little corgi and put him onto the other side. And now we're going to have fun with the lemons. Now I double cut the lemons. So meaning I cut them twice. Um, so some are going to be two layered. Some are going to be one layer. And again, that's just going to give it the dimension, the texture going across the, the top of it. I love the fact <clears throat> that with her new, with Sabrina's new collection, when she has these flowers or in this case, these lemons, <coughs> they are perfectly fitting onto this piece. Now I have them in a pile. What I'm looking at is the bottom tip of the lemon and that's where I'm seeing it matching up onto the tree. She did this with the lavender uh, flower pot. She did this with the, um, I call them snowdrops, uh, the tulips. All of these flowers that she has in her die sets, she has this separate die just for the flowers that you can lay on top. 
and you can get these beautiful colors and you can do so much with them. And the lemons are just no different. It's the same thing. And once I get these lemons on, again, I'm adding dimension by either having one layer of the lemon or I'm adding a second layer of the lemon because I'm using a, a thick cardstock. And what's great, again, I dug into my stash for all of these small pieces. I put a few of the lemons down as if they fell from the tree, um, but we can add some ink to them. So I'm pulling in some of my pulling in my detailed um, brush and I'm just going around the bottom and one side to just add a little bit of ink and again to cast that shadow. I'm not worried about a light source. I just always put my shadow to the right normally um, and then so the sun would be coming in from the left. But I whatever I did on one, I did that to all of them, even the ones that are on the ground except of course that was to the base of that. Now here, I'm not showing that I added the butterflies, but you can see in these pictures, I did. Totally forgot to show that, so I apologize. So I hope I gave you some tips and tricks on die cutting, how you can take that image and make it your own, make it look unique and add some dimension and textures to it. Um, these dies by Scrappy Tails, they are great. Um, with all of the layering that you can do. And the dies that I used in today's project will be linked down below. And if you have any questions, make sure you leave those down below as well. And I will get back to you as soon as I can. If you haven't yet, I'd love you to hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the thumbs up. That lets YouTube know, hey, you like this. And they do let others, you know, they pull it out for others to see. And maybe they would like it as well. I am truly grateful and thankful that you take the time to stop by to watch this video today. Thank you. I truly do appreciate it. Enjoy your time creating, creating your art and how you see it. That's what matters. But most of all, always be creative. And I'll talk to you in the next one, guys. Take care.